my name is Jay, and I'm going to uh, read a story. We'll see how this goes. As we, we'll see how much I mess up. Uh, this one is called, well, this has got a working title. It's for a collection not released yet. <laughs> it may never be released. I don't know. But I do have a little bit of a story here. <sighs> here we go. Just to, the working title is Mr. Devil Man. The town is gray with looming clouds and the driving rain hammering down, soaking everyone and everything in its path. The crumbling streets are quickly gathering ponds of murky water, while bits and pieces detach from the rest and wash away. Visibility is non-existent. Not that it mattered. No one's crazy enough to be out in the storm. Well, no one except the devil himself. And of course, those who decide to wash away the dread of this town with spirits of their choice. Lucifer strolls into the dark and dated establishment and saddles himself up to the bar. The lighting inside the dive is worse than the cold storm splattering down outside. The decor is out of some late 70s mafia film. What will it be? The fine barkeep asks in a shakenly voice, questioning herself if she really sees the sight. Your strongest whiskey, a double if you dare, replies the devil. Rough day? The barkeep fakely smiles back while topping off the shot glass. People, people just don't understand, Lucifer grumbles in a low, gravelly voice. No one sees what I'm doing is a must. The barkeep looks at Satan, raising her eyebrow, contemplating her thoughts. A must, huh? She says. The things you do are a must? Why are they a must? The barkeep's confidence builds to a new level. What good could possibly come out of the things you do? I don't understand. Please, Mr. Devil, please enlighten me with your thoughts. Please explain to me why the evil you bring, the pain you spread, is a must. Lucifer throws back his head as he engulfs the fine contents within the shot glass. The smooth flow makes him chuckle as he sets it back down on the bar. He looks around the bar and sees everyone staring at him, awaiting his answer as if a contestant on a game show. I'll have another if you please, dear, he says with contempt in his voice, gazing the hole through the barkeep's eyes. The bar is quiet as the devil himself now seems to be on display for all to see. Vulnerable, yet still in control of his emotions, Lucifer allows his mouth to create a crooked side grin while he waits for his drink. Two drunken locals watching from a corner table, both with cowboy hats and wearing a lot of denim, decide to stand up and make their way to the bar, each sitting down on either side of the devil. This guy giving you trouble, Cindy? The man to the right of Satan asks, while not taking his eyes off the side of the devil's face. Cindy, the barkeep, hoping to keep the peace, tells the overzealous fake cowboy, Ron, but don't go start stuff you know you can't handle. I ain't looking for no trouble tonight. The quicker you let him drink, the quicker he'll leave. Lucifer raises his head again, looks at Cindy with questionable eyes. In a rush to get rid of me, are we? Am I not a paying customer? His voice is full of harsh, sarcastic tone. Are all outsiders treated this way in your fine establishment? Look, mister, Cindy begins hesitantly before her new confidence disappears. I'm fine with serving you one more drink, but let's make this your last one. I don't think it's such a good idea for you to be here much longer, please. The second fake cowboy to the left of the mister is also staring hard and breathing with a sweat developing on his brow. He feels the heat Lucifer emits from his being, sensing the many sets of eyes watching his every move. The devil straightens his back and sits high, tilting his neck side to side as to crack it from hard day's work. My dear children, he starts, I'm not here for this trouble you believe I bring. No, for if I were, this place would already be a crumbled pile of rubble. Question me not, my day has been long, and even I enjoy a bit of relaxation and a few tasty spirits from time to time. I ask of you, please, to allow me these moments of peace and solitude. 
I'll be on my way shortly. The fake cowboy on the left, now sweating profusely, opens his mouth. Peace? You don't bring peace here. You are not wanted here. Now we ain't done nothing wrong, so why do you think we should let you stay here? Cody, please, said he pipes in. It's fine. I'll just serve him one more drink and he'll be on his way. Both fake cowboys, Cody and Ron, turn to look at Cindy. Ron smiles, showing a lip full of snuff covering the yellow on his teeth. I think we can take care of ourselves now, Cindy. Don't you worry your little head, darling. Now, getting aggravated, with a brighter glow to his being and eyes turning red, Lucifer looks at both Ron and Cody. My sons, I do believe it's best you, the two, listen to this young lady. Hear her request. Follow her direction. I just wish one more drink and I shall be on my way. Those words struck a nerve with Cody. He couldn't let him go. Sons? He questioned. Did you just call us sons? We ain't no sons of the devil. What the fuck are you trying to say? You're in the wrong place, man, Ron added. We don't serve you. We are God's people. We follow a higher power. You're in the wrong town. Your God's gotten lazy, proclaimed Satan in a massive roar, breaking beer mugs and shot glasses throughout the watering hole. Puffs of smoky steam exit the devil's ears. A bright red and yellow glow outline his body. Heat waves raise from his skin. He is standing up facing the bar, facing Cindy behind the bar. All of the patrons in the dive are standing at their tables, looking around at each other. A low volume mumble starts at each person is asking each other questions, adding comments, wondering what to do, wondering what just happened, wondering what is next. God's people, he says in a low monotone voice. God's people. Do you know how many times those words make their way through my ears? God's people. What do those words even mean? We're God's people, he says in a mocking tone. We are do-gooders. We have faith. We serve our God. Are you trying to convince him or yourself? You sound like you're applying to be part of some sort of special society. Only the believers get in. That is exactly who we are, Cindy speaks up once again, finding confidence. We have faith. We are the believers. We know where our destiny lies when our time comes. The devil is looking around the bar, letting red and yellow tones illuminating from his own body. Is that so? You all have faith. You all have it figured out, huh? Impress the big man, and the big man will take care of you. What a crock of hogwash. Do you really think it's that simple? He starts walking around the small cramped building, making eye contact with those who have not ran off yet. So, you all here, you all who have come here today for a little relaxation, for your free lounging, to enjoy the drinks of the poison that ails you, think the plan is that simple. The plan is that easy. This question is too much for fake cowboy Ron to stay quiet. What is your point? What are you getting at? We know what we believe. Your beliefs are lies, erupted Satan. Don't you get it? It's all part of his plan. His whole foundation is that of false beliefs. Your beliefs mean nothing. There is no real true plan. You make it sound like you're signing a contract. But read the fine print. The stipulations in the contract which you every time. The responsibilities outlined in your make-believe contracts are unattainable. The tasks are raised to an unreachable level. He walks towards Ron, stares at his face, admiring the tan wrinkled cheeks and guilty eyes. Do you think God is going to forgive you and let you in his palace for what you do to your son if the chores are not done? Hats and sunglasses and long sleeves can only cover those cuts and bruises for so long. But they're not hidden from him. Ron starts to stumble looking for words. What, what, what do you mean? I never done nothing to my son, you son of a bitch. Lies. What's he talking about, Ron? Cindy asks, giving a cold, hard look of shock towards him. Ron steps back a few steps, blindly grabbing for a table to brace himself. He's full of lies, I tell you. He's, he's making things up. He's trying to turn us against each other. Satan laughs at this thought. That's humor, son. I don't have a need to do that. No, not at all. You all do that for me. He walks behind the counter at the bar, reaches down low, finds the stash of the high-end whiskey Cindy keeps out of sight. Look what we have here, my dear. Keeping the good stuff away from your top patrons. Don't mind if I do, seeing that I just wanted a drink or two, but no one was able to just let me be. Now let's have some fun. 
Cindy again speaks up. Look, you've made your point. No one is hurt. Just take the drinks you want and please leave us. I'm just getting started, he laughs loud and long, piercing as the cuspers cover their ears. He knocks the top off the new bottle of whiskey, takes a long swig, basking in the ecstasy of the taste. He sets the bottle down in front of him and leans on the counter, to, much like a barkeep himself, caught in conversation with the local patron. Cody, is it? Do you feel the same as your buddy Ron over here? Do you feel you've already signed an ironclad contract with God Almighty himself? Maybe a reservation with a nice view? Cody's eyes are huge, glassed over, and his jaw drops, exposing several empty spaces, teeth once occupied. You ain't got nothing on me, you sorry motherfucker. Fuck you, you son of a bitch. The grin on Lucifer's face is now ear to ear. Oh, okay, I guess. I have nothing on you, my son. No skeletons in your closet, huh? Or should I say, at the bottom of your well? Enjoying the new extension of your land, are you? How did that come to be, by the way? Your neighbor member just signed it over to you. That was awfully nice of him. Hell, he couldn't take it with him, right? Well, that's right. We, we don't hear much from him anymore. Well, except for maybe the voices that call you late at night. Don't worry, my son. You'll start sleeping better soon. You fucking lying sack of shit! Cody yells, running towards Satan, knowing damn well he had no plan once he reaches him. That plan isn't needed as the devil slams his fist down on the counter, causing a sonic wave through the bar, knocking Cody over several tables before coming to his final resting spot, face down in the corner. Stop! 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 said the yell, seeing enough. You've made your point, please. Just leave while I still have a business. Please, I'm begging you. Begging, Lucifer turns to look at Cindy. Oh no, my dear, you don't beg for me. At least not yet. This isn't about me. Begging is something you do to him. Begging for forgiveness seems to be a daily routine in some of our lives. Am I right, Cindy? Why, just this morning, you did a little begging for yourself, I believe. Ah, yes, it was while balancing the numbers for this place, right? Double charges, rounding up, sound familiar? I don't blame you for one second. This town is so ridiculously stupid, no one checks their accounts for accuracy. They might as well just give you the money. Besides, you need that extra money to help with old habits, don't you? Makeup can only cover those track marks so long. You're evil! You're so damn evil! Cindy yells. Why do you do this? Why do you make us do these things? You make us fail. This is all you. All your evil ways. Finishing off the first bottle of the good stuff, Lucifer grabs a new one and examines the label. What? This evil? The evils and sins I've exposed here today? No, not at all, my dear. This isn't me, nah. -uh. This is all his doing. Haven't you been listening to me? Hasn't anyone in here been listening? His voice raises, echoing through the room. He has set you all up. He has set you all up for one thing and one thing only. Failure, complete failure. Don't you get it? That solid contract you all think you have is fake. No one can live up to those expectations. No one. You think I have something to do with this? With the things you do behind closed doors? The things you do to each other? No, that's not me. This, this here today, this is not me. Not at all. This is all small time stuff set up by your fearless leader, your God, to make it impossible to succeed. Ask yourself this, if he is so strong and powerful, why doesn't he answer you? Why does he allow this to happen? It's all a game to him. You look at him in times of trouble. You praise him in times of joy. He gets the best of both worlds. This stuff here, this is beyond my control. Besides, I see bigger things. I have bigger plans. I think bigger. Lucifer begins to laugh more as he walks around the counter, bottle in hand, and makes his way towards the door. Looks like the rain is letting up. This was fun, but let's not do it anytime soon. Both Ron and Cody are slow to move, struggling to get up to their feet. Cindy's behind the counter, arms folded, her face buried in her hand, sobbing. The rest of the locals are standing in front of the chairs, slowly turning their heads, looking at each other with shock in their face. An older gentleman standing closer to the door 
balancing himself with a cane, steps in front of Satan's before he leaves. How can you say you have nothing to do with this? How can you say God does all of this as his little game? What is your excuse for saying this? Why should we believe you? Ah, old man, you've lived quite a life. My words seem to have shattered your lifetime of beliefs. Lucifer responds with a glowing smile. Easy. Do you think for one second it would be good without evil? It's his God complex. He says, smiling, showing all of his teeth. And with that, the devil himself leaves through the door and those standing behind are left to start picking up what is left of their lives. That's it. That's what I do it. That's my short story, complete with mess ups. You wouldn't expect anything less, would you? All right, see ya. Thank <laughs> you.